Chapter 1761. The objective of Shrek Academy and the Tang sect wasn't just to oppose the abyssal creatures, but also to seek revenge against the Holy Spirit cult. The Spirit Pagoda was merely the accomplice. The Holy Spirit cult was the true perpetrator. Only by wiping out the Holy Spirit cult in its entirety for the souls of all of the lives lost during the bombing be truly put at peace. Currently, it was clear that the abyssal plane was being quite cautious. It was undoubtedly the case that they cherished this opportunity greatly, and even though they knew that Tang Wu was nearby, the Holy Spirit cult didn't immediately launch an attack. Either they were waiting for more powerful abyssal creatures to appear, and the humans were also waiting, waiting for more reinforcements. Tang Wu made a few calls in succession to communicate with several parties. Currently, the North Sea Legion had already reached the nearby region of the sea, and it would still take them about one more day to arrive. The East Sea Legion was right behind, and it would take them roughly two more days to get here. The two legions were going to place the coastline in complete lockdown and attack the abyssal army from the sea. The Sea God Legion was further away in the south, and it had retreated due to the fact that the war against the other two continents had failed to go ahead, so it would take them even longer to arrive, roughly projected to be five more days. Some of the powerful beings of the Sea God Legion were already on their way here with the Central Legion's forces, but they would still take around three more days to get here. The Southern Legion, Western Legion, and Northwest Legion were going to take even longer, and that was simply inevitable due to the geographic factors. All of the military forces on the entire continent had already been mobilized, and an order had been issued to restrict the abyssal army to the northernmost region of the continent at all costs. The peace lasted for about a day, and right before the North Sea Legion was about to arrive, the abyssal army unleashed its next attack. In the distance, the entire sky seemed to have turned a dim gray color. Of course, that wasn't the natural color of the sky, it was the result of countless flying abyssal creatures obscuring the heavens like a series of dark clouds. On the ground below, even more abyssal creatures had appeared, some of which were gargantuan in stature. A type of abyssal creature that even Tang Wulin had never seen before was leading from the forefront. These abyssal creatures bore a beetle-like appearance, but they were countless times larger than the average beetle. The diameter of their bodies spanned in excess of 200 meters, and they were supported by 12 feet and long legs. Despite their enormous size, they weren't moving slowly at all. There were around 30 to 40 of these beetle-like abyssal creatures, atop which stood other living beings, some of which were human. There was no doubt that those humans were powerful beings of the Holy Spirit cult. The one standing atop the giant beetle at the very forefront was a woman with an extremely alluring figure, which was encased in a suit of black armor. Only her eyes were visible through her mask, and her powerful aura was causing the air around her to warp and shimmer slightly. Atop each of the two beetles on either side of her stood a human, and the one on the left was none other than Infernal King Delo As for the one on the right, that was someone whom everyone from Shrek Academy held intense hatred for. A series of giant green skulls were revolving around his body, and he had a set of hideous facial features, the centerpieces of which was a pair of glowing green eyes. This was Ghost Emperor of the Holy Spirit cult, and just like Harissa, he was also a quasi god. Tang Wu Ling stood on the mountaintop, appraising the abyssal army in the distance, and he was able to immediately identify the woman at the forefront. Back in the Battle God Hole, he had encountered this woman before, and according to the Heartless Dulo, she was the ruler of the abyssal plane's ninth level, Black Sovereign. Only the rulers of the top ten levels of the abyss were referred to as sovereigns, and all sovereigns were quasi god level beings. Seeing the Black Sovereign again, Tang Wu Ling could clearly sense that her aura was far more powerful than in the past. He knew that the Black Sovereign had been unable to display her full power as she had been restricted by the large number of formations in the abyssal passageway, but on this occasion, she was here in her most powerful form. Not only was she extremely formidable herself, the Black Empress race that she ruled over was also a force to be reckoned with. At this moment, he could see some black empresses in the abyssal army. Even though the abyssal army wasn't advancing very quickly, Tang Wuling's heart was filled with dread at the sight of it. In such a short time, even the black sovereign had already emerged from the abyssal passageway. What was going to follow? When was the Holy Lord going to appear? Tang Wuling knew that there was no one in this world capable of matching the Holy Lord in battle. Even back when he joined forces with Pu Yuna, they were only able to force back a single hand of the Holy Lord. If it weren't for the fact that the Holy Lord was being restricted by the entire plane on that occasion, both of them would have most likely already perished in that battle. It was clear that the abyssal plane had been plotting this invasion for a long time, and it was impossible to tell how many abyssal rulers had already emerged. Just as the human race was doing everything in its power to stop the abyssal army, the abyssal army was also trying its best to break through the defensive line before further reinforcements arrived. There was only one Tang Wuling and only one Golden Dragon Sphere. If the abyssal army were allowed to reach further inland, then widespread slaughter was sure to follow. At this point, the only forces opposing the abyssal army were less 70,000 troops, five limit duos, and the North Sea Legion out at sea. This wasn't the time to be considering whether they could stop the abyssal enemy. The fact of the matter was that the abyssal army had to be stopped at all costs. Tang Wuling was standing in front of the secondary tree of life with the four limit duo on either side of him. The soldiers of the Northern Legion and Central Legion were ready, and the battle was on the brink of erupting. Tang Wuling. A rather peculiar voice rang out in the distance. This seemed to be a female voice, but it sounded rather strange, like the voice of someone who wasn't used to speaking this language. Tang Wuling faltered slightly upon hearing this, but he quickly identified the one who had spoken to be none other than the Black Sovereign. Even though they were separated by many kilometers, their eyes were still able to meet. The Black Sovereign's eyes were like a pair of black vortexes that were able to devour one spirit, and she was appraising Tang Wuling intently. Surrender and join us. The Holy Lord has agreed to give you one of the top three levels of the Abyss and to make you the most powerful being in the Abyss second only to him. You'll even be made the enforcer of the Abyss. Her gaze wandered to the Golden Dragon Spear in Tang Wuling's hand as she spoke, and her eyes were filled with weariness. She had personally witnessed Tang Wuling permanently killing three Abyssal Emperors with that Golden Dragon Spear, causing three Abyssal levels to collapse and shaking the very foundation of the Abyss. This was the first time that something like this had happened since the formation of the Abyssal Plane, and that was why the Holy Lord had out to kill Tang Wuling despite the massive price that had to be incurred. His failure had allowed Tang Wuling to develop into who he was now, and he posed by far the greatest threat to the abyssal plane. With the Golden Dragon Spear at his disposal, Tang Wuling was the perfect candidate to become the enforcer of the abyss. The Black Sovereign continued, once we devour the Duluo continent, we'll be able to create a divine realm, one that's completely unique. In all of space, our divine realm will have more potential to grow rapidly than any other divine realm. In the future, our plane's rate of growth will only continue to increase as we devour other planes, and in the end, we're going to devour the entirety of space, making it a part of ourselves. This is the grand vision of the Holy Lord, and if you join us, you'll bear witness to the fruition of this vision alongside all of us. Chapter 1762 she seemed to be growing more and more fluent as she spoke, and by the end, it was almost as if she was delivering a rousing speech. A cold and disdainful smile appeared on Tang Wuling's face. Are you finished? His voice wasn't very loud, but it was audible across the entire battlefield. The Black Sovereign replied, I am. This is your last chance. If you won't become one of us, then you'll be our enemy. Tang Wuling said, let's stop wasting time with these pointless words. Come. He had no intention of speaking with these abyssal creatures, and he wouldn't be able to stall for much time anyway. All of a sudden, the powerful unyielding will that had crushed the spirit of the three limit Duluo of the Kayangi family instantly erupted forth. Even from many kilometers away, the abyssal army was still slowed down slightly by this fierce aura. Tang Wuling raised his golden dragon spear, and his eyes were filled with unmatched battle intent. He was being faced with many powerful abyssal creatures and formidable beings from the Holy Spirit cult. But so what? If they wanted a battle, then that was what they were going to get. Influenced by the peerless battle intent radiating from Tang Wuling's body, all of the
Wolin had never seen before. Right at this moment, the giant beetles also rose up into the air, and all of them flew directly toward the mountaintop that Tang Wolin was situated on, led by the Black Sovereign and the two emperors of the Holy Spirit cult. It was clear that their target was the secondary tree of life. Countless streaks of light instantly erupted forth, bombarding the oncoming flying abyssal creatures. In contrast with the Northern Legion's equipment, the soul weapons that were brought by the Central Legion were far more advanced, and the soul lasers were able to automatically lock onto targets while ensuring that no target was ever repeatedly struck. Even the six clawed bats and four clawed bats couldn't fly faster than the speed of light, and countless flying abyssal creatures were quickly reduced to gray mist. Tang Wolin had already raised his golden dragon spear high up into the air to begin devouring the abyssal energy. Right at this moment, a massive black vortex appeared behind the Black Sovereign, and it was also drawing abyssal energy toward itself. The rate at which abyssal energy was being drawn toward the two sides was virtually identical, and the abyssal energy in the air was split up into two parts, one of which was drawn to the secondary tree of life, while the other was drawn back into the abyssal plane by the Black Sovereign. You must die. The Black Sovereign's icy voice rang out within Tang Wolin's ears, and in the same instant, a burst of enormous pressure surged directly toward him. Look out! Yuan and Zhenshin immediately lashed out with a punch, and a resounding boom rang out, following which the Black Sovereign appeared hundreds of meters away. Among the five limit duo on Tang Wolin's side, Yuan and Zhenshin was the only quasi god, but he hadn't gained an advantage during that clash. The Black Sovereign's forte lied in her ability to devour, and during that clash, Yuan and Zhenshin could clearly sense that some of his soul power had been sucked away by his opponent. As such, he had emerged second best from that clash. It was no wonder that such prideful characters like Infernal Emperor and Ghost Emperor were willing to stand on either side of her. She really was extremely formidable. Even though Tang Wolin's group was comprised of five people, they were still under immense pressure in the face of the three quasi gods. Under normal circumstances, they would be able to run away even if they couldn't win. But under these circumstances, fleeing wasn't an option unless the situation was absolutely dire. If this defensive line were to crumble, the human army would be defeated, and the abyssal army would be able to advance deep into the continent. A full-scale battle had already commenced, and the abyssal army was far more formidable than before. A decisive outcome wouldn't be reached on the main battlefield in a short time, so the overall outcome of the battle most likely hinged on the result of the clash between Limit Duluo. A burst of unsettling cackling rang out, and even Tang Wolin and the Limit Duluo on his side were struck by a rush of dizziness. It was as if the surrounding area had already been transformed into a ghostly realm. A series of massive skulls appeared in all directions, blasting eerie green flames toward them. Ghost Emperor was the one who had orchestrated the Shrek City bombing. At the time, he had been able to directly oppose the Atlas Duluo, and that was a clear testament to his powers. Now that his power was being unleashed, it was as if the entire area had been transformed into a sea of blood and death. Meanwhile, Infernal Emperor concealed himself within the eerie green flames, vanishing on the spot. A ball of light that resembled a black sun rose up above the black sovereign, and the ball of light had a shimmering golden lining, but its center was like an all devouring black hole. Enormous suction force instantly erupted forth, targeting both Tang Wolin's group and the life energy of the secondary tree of life. Right at this moment, a captivating angelic song rang out, and holy light radiated from Yelly's body. The adverse effects brought on by Ghost Emperor's powers were instantly alleviated, and the gentle white light formed a light barrier to keep all of the green flames at bay. As soon as the green flames came into contact with the holy light, it would instantly dissipate like snow and ice melting in the face of hot oil. A suit of pristine white battle armor appeared over Yelly's body. This was her four-word battle armor, holy missing Yunming. This suit of four-word battle armor had been tailor-made for Yali by Tang Wolin, while she was the one who had given it its name. No one resented Ghost Emperor more than she did as it was him who had permanently separated her from the man she so dearly loved. Under the enhancement of her four-word battle armor, her powerful holy aura was instantly able to keep all of the Black Sovereign and Ghost Emperor's attacks at bay. Despite the fact that Yali was a quasi god, she was every bit as useful as a quasi god when it came to opposing the Holy Spirit cult. Her holy powers naturally repressed all evil forces, and even the most basic of her healing abilities were formidable attacks against evil soul masters. Back when Tang Wolin had been attacked by Infernal Emperor on the Star Luo continent, it was her who had saved the day and forced Tarasar into retreat. Chapter 1763. It was at this moment that Tang Wolin also sprang into action. He took a step forward, and a look of intense focus appeared in his eyes as the light radiating from the Golden Dragon Spear became completely internalized, turning the spear a pure golden color. Following which he gently thrust it toward the Black Sovereign. The Black Sovereign wore a grim expression as she looked on at Tang Wolin, even though he wasn't being enhanced by the Blood God Array. She could clearly sense that he had become far more formidable than that time. Even more worthy of concern was the fact that the spear he was wielding had also become more fearsome. The Black Sovereign's body transitioned between illusion and reality, and she swept her right hand through the air, flicking her fingers toward the Golden Dragon Spear as if she were playing an imaginary zither. A series of black scales appeared over her hand as her fingers instantly transformed into sharp claws, and the Golden Dragon Spear was repelled with a crisp clang. But one of the scales on the Black Sovereign's hand had turned completely white before falling off like a withered leaf. The Black Sovereign harumped coldly in response. She had already restricted the Golden Dragon Spear's devouring power to the smallest possible area, but it was still a very uncomfortable sensation. She stomped a foot down onto the ground, and another massive black vortex appeared beneath her, tearing a rift into Yelly's protective barrier. Following which the black light surged toward Tang Wolin in the form of countless giant black tendrils. A series of huge blue vines emerged around Tang Wolin to directly clash with these black tendrils, and a cold smile appeared on the Black Sovereign's face upon seeing this as tremendous devouring force instantly erupted from the black tendrils. Tang Wolin could instantly feel his soul power and life force being rapidly engulfed by his opponent. Among the sovereigns of the abyss, the Black Sovereign was renowned for her devouring prowess, and this was why the Holy Lord had sent her to target Tang Wolin. With her present on the battlefield, it would become a lot more difficult for Tang Wolin to devour abyssal energy as he pleased. However, the Black Sovereign's cold smile instantly congealed as arcs of rainbow lightning appeared over the surfaces of the Blue Silver and Provines. Right as she began devouring Tang Wolin's power, the lightning was also devoured by the Black Tendrils, and the Black Sovereign instantly let loose an agonized cry. Lightning then crackled all over her entire body as she rapidly fell back in retreat. All of this had taken place in the blink of an eye, and the Black Sovereign had been forced back into retreat before Ghost Emperor had even figured out what was happening. It was of course unbeknownst to the Black Sovereign that Tang Wolin had been adopting an extremely rigorous heavenly refinement regimen for the past few months, thereby allowing him to absorb a vast amount of elemental lightning. The lightning formed by elemental tribulations represented the wrath of the entire plane. It contained the purest plane of power of the Duluo continent, and it was imbued with the destructive explosiveness of lightning, making it the bane of all things evil. Furthermore, its power was being further enhanced by the infernal lightning vine, and the Black Sovereign was completely caught off guard. In the meantime, everyone else had also sprung into action. Yali was unable to focus on maintaining her protective barrier any longer, as the human army on the main battlefield was already on the verge of collapse. That's right, an army of 70,000 elite troops supported by all types of advanced soul weapons was almost instantly crushed by the opposing army. The reason for this was very simple: there were far too many powerful beings in the opposing army. Aside from the three quasi gods, all of the figures standing atop the other giant black beetles were also extremely formidable beings, most of whom were from the Holy Spirit cult. Evil soul masters excelled in slaughter, and a large battlefield like this one was the perfect place for them to flourish. As for the giant beetles themselves, they didn't seem to possess much offensive prowess, but their physical defenses were so strong that taking a direct explosion from a sixth grade soul missile could only stop them in their tracks for a moment. These abyssal creatures were known as guardian longhorn beetles, and they possessed the greatest defensive prowess
First Emperor immediately realized that something was wrong, and he wanted to stop Yali, but he was met by a pair of giant feasts, Nang Yuan and Zhenshin's Divine Cloud Vortex Feasts. Yuan and Yui had invented the Divine Cloud Vortex Feasts, and following some guidance from Ming, it had become one of the Yuan family's most powerful battle techniques. At this moment, it was being unleashed by the quasi-god level Yuan and Zhenshin. In terms of overall power, a rookie quasi-god like him was still inferior to Ghost Emperor by a significant margin, but at the same time, there was no way that Ghost Emperor could defeat him in a short time. An angelic song rang out across the entire sky, and Yali wore a warm smile as she hovered in the air with her arms crossed over her chest. Pairs of pristine white wings slowly unfurled behind her, amounting to a total of six pairs. The twelve wings flapped gently as nine golden pillars of light projected down from above, making it appear as if nine suns had been conjured up in the sky. A figure appeared within each of the nine suns. There were a series of golden angels, each with six golden wings on their backs. As soon as they appeared, the time and space on the entire battlefield seemed to have warped slightly, causing everyone to look up in unison. For all of the humans on the battlefield, they felt as if their bodies and souls had been elevated to a whole new level. This was an indescribably wonderful feeling of intense comfort, and their powers were instantly enhanced by over 30%. Immediately thereafter, the nine golden angles flapped their wings in unison, causing countless specks of golden radiance to rain down from the heavens. The storm of golden light covered such a large area that it encompassed virtually the entire defensive line beneath it. These were Yali's two most powerful soul skills, Archangel's Dance and Angelic Blessing. Both of these soul skills were of the healing and assistance classes, and Yali had been able to use them as soon as she had become a titled duo. However, even as a titled duo, she was only able to use Angelic Blessing once a year, and she had to ignite her flame of life to do so. Even as a limit duo, she was only able to use Angelic Blessing once a day, and that was a clear testament to just how powerful the soul skill was. Chapter 1764 the power of a soul skill had a positive relationship with the power of the soul master, but the same applied for the restrictions of a soul skill. All soul skills with prerequisites for usage were more powerful than normal soul skills, and the more restrictions and usage prerequisites a soul skill had, the more powerful it would be. Angelic blessing was a perfect example of this, and even Archangel's dance was something that Yali could only use thrice a day. Hence, these were two soul skills that she very rarely used. The effect of angelic blessing was mass revival, and it was the only mass revival soul skill in the history of all soul masters. However, when used on evil soul masters, this mass revival ability turned into mass destruction. Archangel's dance and angelic blessing was the most powerful soul skill combination that Yali could unleash. The two didn't form a soul fusion skill, but they did enhance one another, and in terms of their healing effect, they could virtually be considered to be a soul fusion skill. Healing system martial souls were different from all other martial souls as healing system soul skills always had the largest scope, as well as the most overall power. In any plane, there always existed an abstract higher power. Yali had saved countless people during her life, so she was no less acknowledged by the plane than Tang Wuling was. As such, whenever she was unleashing her healing system soul skills with all her might, she would receive the blessing of the plane and the acknowledgement of light elements. The Holy Angel Clan also drew upon a similar type of power, but no one was more adept at borrowing the power of heaven and earth than healing system soul masters. As such, when these two soul skills were stacked on top of one another, they created Yali's ultimate soul skill, Archangel's Holy Spirit Dance. The nine golden archangels were already beginning to dance in the sky, and the golden radiance that was filled with a holy aura rained down from the heavens. All humans received significant boosts from this radiance, and the effect was most pronounced on those who had sustained injuries. Regardless of how severe their injuries were, they were instantly healed and returned to prime condition. In contrast, the evil soul masters on the battlefield were dealt a heavy blow. None of them had even heard of a holy aura of this caliber, let alone seen it in person. After all, the Holy Spirit cult had already gone into hiding before Yali became a limit duo, so she never had a chance to unleash this ultimate soul skill of hers. As such, it could be said that this was the first time that Archangel's Holy Spirit dance was ever appearing on a battlefield. Under the backdrop of the giant angels and the golden radiance that had illuminated virtually the entire sky, the Holy Spirit duo bore the appearance of a true deity. An evil soul master had just rushed into the territory of the human army and unleashed a soul skill that he had already prepared. A vast expanse of black mist was instantly released, transforming into a series of malicious ghosts that pounced toward the troops. Right at this moment, the golden radiance descended, and the evil soul master felt as if he had become immersed in a pool of warm water. The black mist he had released instantly vanished, and much to his horror, he discovered that his body was also fading away like his soul skill had. There was no pain; his entire body was vast in warm golden light. But the fear in his heart had reached a peak. Imagine how terrifying it would be for someone to watch their own limbs dissolve away before their very eyes. He wasn't even capable of crying out to assuage his horror. All he could do was open his mouth in a screaming motion, but he was unable to make a single sound as his body completely disappeared off the face of this world. The same fate was befalling the abyssal creatures, but they weren't as heavily affected as the evil soul masters. Holy power rejected and destroyed all evil. From the perspective of the human race, the destructive tendencies of the abyssal creatures made them evil, thereby making them rejected by holy power. However, this was fundamentally different from evil soul masters, who relied on death and horror, and all types of negative emotions to cultivate. Even so, all of the abyssal creatures were almost slowed to a complete standstill, and countless flying abyssal creatures were plummeting out of the sky. Their bodies were also dissolving, but at a slightly slower rate. The bodies of the weakest abyssal creatures were rapidly fading, transforming into gray energy that was ushered toward the secondary tree of life by Yoli's holy aura. This was truly a miraculous sight. Everyone was looking on with astonishment in their eyes, and none of the powerful beings of the abyss could have imagined that a single human would be capable of all of this. On this battlefield, she was virtually a god. She had saved all of her allies while severely debilitating the opposing army, turning the tide of the entire battle on her own. Even the evil soul masters of the same caliber as the four heavenly monarchs were currently desperately flying back in retreat, not daring to come into contact with the holy radiance. All of the evil soul masters that had rushed onto the battlefield were debilitated to different degrees, and all those who hesitated, even only for a split second, all dissolved away under the golden light. Never did the Holy Spirit cult think that Shrek Academy would prepare such a massive present for them, and they were even more taken aback by the fact that Yali was unveiling this trump card from the get-go. Yali truly resented these evil soul masters, and the sight of them descending upon the battlefield completely ignited the flames of fury in her heart. Even Infernal Emperor and Ghost Emperor were severely affected by Archangel's holy dance, and they could only forcibly keep its power at bay. The first to be affected was Infernal King Dulu Harissa. Under the impact of the holy radiance, the skulls released by Ghost Emperor slowly faded away, thereby exposing Harissa. As a result, he could only unleash a direct assault against Tang Wuling. Prior to coming here, they had already set their primary objective as killing Tang Wuling. However, Tang Wuling wasn't fighting alone. Two figures appeared in Harris's path at the same time, namely Free Sly Dulu Yuan and Tian Dang, and Killing Dulu Tongu. Both of them were demigods, and under normal circumstances, they would already be able to put up a good fight against Harissa. Furthermore, Harissa was debilitated by Archangel's holy spirit dance, and he couldn't even summon his infernal realm as doing so would spell instant death for all of the infernal creatures in that realm. As a result, he was forced onto the back foot by the pair of Limit Dulu. Meanwhile, Yali had been constantly chanting something in a murmur, and her Archangel's holy spirit dance had already lasted for close to three minutes. Over a third of the abyssal creatures in the opposing army had been reduced to gray mist, and the Black Sovereign was unable to pay them any heed as she was also focusing on withstanding the holy radiance. So all of their energy was absorbed by the secondary tree of life. The Holy Spirit cult had suffered even heavier losses, with over 200 evil soul masters meeting their demise. All of the evil soul masters deployed for this battle were or above the soul emperor level, and among those who had
Tang Wu Lin and Yoli's teamwork was seamless. He had only just wounded the Black Sovereign with his elemental tribulation lightning when Archangel's Holy Spirit dance commenced, affording the Black Sovereign no opportunity for respite. The Black Sovereign had to combat Tang Wu Lin's spear essence level golden dragon spear while keeping the Holy Radiance at bay, thereby placing her firmly on the back foot. As a result, the Black Sovereign was feeling very frustrated. Never did she think that Tang Wu Lin would become so much more powerful since their last encounter. The power of the elemental tribulation had dealt far too heavy a blow upon her. It had even harmed the core of her being. Furthermore, the pressure from Tang Wu Lin was relentless, and she had thought that she would be able to count on the two quasi gods from the Holy Spirit cult, but they were so severely debilitated by the Holy Spirit duo that they weren't even able to unleash half of their powers. What she had thought to be an absolute advantage had been turned into a complete disadvantage. Other abyssal creatures were constantly charging forward from either side of the Black Sovereign, helping her withstand Tang Wu Lin's attacks. But they obviously weren't able to pose any substantial impediment to him. All of a sudden, two balls of black light shot forth toward Tang Wulin, with each ball of light containing a black empress. Two black vortexes emerged, exerting such force from either side of Tang Wulin in an attempt to slow him down. However, the vortexes had only just taken shape when they suddenly stopped revolving, then quickly crumbled away under the effect of Tang Wulin's time reversal domain. Two beams of golden light erupted out of Tang Wulin's golden dragon sphere, piercing through the chests of the two black empresses right as they were reeling from the effects of his spiritual domain. The bodies of the two black empresses immediately collapsed in on themselves, and the golden dragon sphere devoured their life energy before instantly reciprocating the energy to Tang Wulin. Taking advantage of this influx of energy, Tang Wulin unleashed his fury of the masses. His sphere began to glow even more radiantly as countless sphere projections shot forth in all directions before combining as one, instantly reaching the black sovereign. The black sovereign harumped coldly as a series of purple halos erupted out of her body. This was one of her abilities, withering death. Generally speaking, withering death could easily encompass an area with a diameter of around a kilometer, and within this area, all life force would be destroyed and devoured. However, the debilitating effect of Archangel's holy dance significantly limited the scope of her withering death, and withering death at its normal concentration wouldn't be able to stop Tang Wuling, so she was forced to further reduce the scope of the attack. More spear projections erupted forth, rapidly multiplying as they surged through the air. Each spear projection was imbued with tremendous power and blood essence fluctuations, guiding the holy radiance in the air as they pierced into the withering death. At the same time, Tang Wuling reached out with his left hand, and a small world seems to have formed within the palm of his giant golden dragon claw. This was his dragon emperor break. The black sovereign could sense that the vortex she had conjured up was instantly torn to shreds, then reduced to nothingness by a burst of enormous suction force. What was that? Just as she was reeling from this abrupt turn of events, Tang Wuling's entire body suddenly seemed to darken slightly, and in that instant, an overwhelming sense of peril welled up in the Black Sovereign's heart. She detonated the black scales all over her body without any hesitation, and a black projection that was identical to her appeared up ahead. Meanwhile, she immediately disappeared into a door of light behind the projection. Tang Wuling's Dragon Emperor Annihilation was only just beginning to take shape, and the Black Sovereign had already forcibly torn it open space to flee the battlefield. This was a teleportation, ability that stemmed from the abyssal plane, but of course, a price had to be extended to create this substitute. As the projection was destroyed by Tang Wuling's Golden Dragon Sphere, a fierce burst of life energy was instantly injected into the Golden Dragon Sphere, then transmitted in its entirety to the secondary tree of life. A shake screech instantly rang out across the entire battlefield, and the abyssal army that had been advancing like a tidal wave just a moment ago quickly began to retreat. Infernal Emperor and Ghost Emperor also unleashed a powerful soul steel each to hold off their opponents before fleeing into the distance. When facing quasi god level beings like them, it was very difficult to prevent them from getting away should they be determined to escape. Tang Wuling didn't give chase. Instead, he merely raised his golden dragon spear high above his head to absorb the remaining abyssal energy on the battlefield while looking into the distance with a grim expression. This battle had concluded just as quickly as it had begun, and the abyssal army had nothing to show for their efforts. While the Holy Spirit cult had also suffered heavy losses, however, Tang Wuling knew that this was only the beginning. This initial attack had failed to achieve the desired outcome, so the next attack was only going to be even more ferocious. Right at this moment, a series of giant mushroom clouds exploded among the abyssal army, and the concentration of abyssal energy in the air instantly spiked significantly. Tang Wuling raised an eyebrow upon seeing this. He knew that the North Sea Legion was taking advantage of the abyssal army's retreat to bombard them with a barrage of fierce attacks. It had to be said that the commander of the North Sea Legion was an exceptional strategist with impeccable timing. At the same time, the troops of the Northern Legion and Central Legion were also firing their long distance weapons to take down as many abyssal creatures as possible. Within the span of just a few seconds, Tang Wuling's Golden Dragon Sphere had already become scorching hot. Due to the enormous influx of life energy, every single leaf on the secondary tree of life had become as bright and exuberant as jade. At the same time, the secondary tree of life was growing steadily, and once all of the abyssal energy on the battlefield was devoured, the overall mass of the tree had increased by close to a third. Yoli's entire body was vast in a layer of green light, and as she slowly opened her eyes, a hint of surprise appeared on her face. In the short span of less than twenty minutes, everything that she had expended earlier had been entirely recovered. She could even unleash her Archangel's Holy Spirit dance again without any issues. Only now did she come to realize just how useful the secondary tree of life was. It was undoubtedly going to be the core of this battle. Night had already fallen by the time the abyssal army completely disappeared into the distance, and only now did everyone heave a sigh of relief. It was clear that the abyssal army was far more well prepared for the second attack than the first one. Not only had the black sovereign descended upon this plane, she was accompanied by many of the Holy Spirit cult's powerful beings, including the two emperors. Yet they had still scurried away with their tails between their legs. While it was true that the abyssal army had been too impatient and rushing their attack, Tang Wuling and the others could certainly be proud of themselves for forcing back the abyssal army, led by a trio of quasi gods. The key to their victory had been Yoli's Archangel's Holy Spirit dance. This combination soul skill had encompassed virtually the entire battlefield, dealing a heavy blow to the Holy Spirit cult and the abyssal army. In addition to that, the devouring ability of Tang Wuling's Golden Dragon Spear had ensured that a large proportion of the slain abyssal creatures were permanently dead. Are you all right, mother? Tang Wuling asked as he stood beside the secondary tree of life. The secondary tree of life was of the utmost importance to the human army, so the five limit duos were constantly stationed around it in case of sneak attacks from the enemy. Yali smiled and nodded in response. This secondary tree of life is truly incredible. It bestowed upon me an enormous amount of life energy, allowing me to unleash my soul skills without qualms. Right now, I can unleash Archangel's Holy Spirit dance again without any problems, but under normal circumstances, it would have taken me at least three days to recover. It's a pity that we don't have enough firepower on our side. Otherwise, we would have been able to put an end to those evil soul masters once and for all. Tang Wuling nodded in response. Indeed, it's quite a pity that we don't have enough troops to give chase. Yali said with a serious expression, "Don't get complacent. We have to be careful not to grow careless just because we won this battle. Six thousand years ago, countless powerful beings of that generation had joined forces to stop the abyssal plane. In the end." The majority of them perished, and even then, they were only just barely able to seal the Abyssal Passageway. Chapter 1766 Compared to back then, the Abyssal Plane is even more developed, so it will most likely be even more difficult to combat it. Currently, we're not sure how many Abyssal Sovereigns are able to descend onto our dual continent. Those are all quasi-gods, and the further ahead they're ranked, the more powerful they'll be. Even the Black Sovereign is only ranked ninth. I recall the commander of the Abyssal Army 6,000 years ago was the third ranked Abyssal Sovereign, who was so powerful that even three
Tang will lean towards Tiamat naturally before continuing, unless there's a being of a similar caliber to that plane or ruler willing to sacrifice themselves as a vessel. Only then will there be a possibility. The abyssal plane shouldn't be more powerful than our plane. It's just that they're more adept at devouring others, so they'll be more difficult for us to combat. Furthermore, the Holy Lord may be powerful, but he's not necessarily more powerful than our Duluo continent's plane or ruler. It's just that our plane or ruler has no concrete form. Yali nodded in response. I hope that's all true. In that case, it really is next to impossible for the Holy Lord to descend onto our plane. He is a true god, and there's no godly being currently on our Duluo continent. Even if one appears, there's no way they'll be willing to sacrifice themselves as a vessel for the Holy Lord. If one has already attained godhood, there'll be no reason for them to work with the abyssal plane. So even the Holy Spirit cult wouldn't do something like that. Tang Wulin said, if the Holy Spirit cult had a god among their ranks, they would most likely already conquer the entire continent. Take some rest. Mother, I'll look after things here. You can both go and have some rest. I'll always be here. Tong Yu's voice rang out as he arrived beside Tang Wulin and Yali. Ever since arriving on the Duluo continent, Tong Yu was still somewhat unaccustomed to everything here. He had already been a limit Duluo for quite some time, and he had gradually cultivated to the demigod level. Back when he first arrived on the Duluo continent, he had thought that there would most likely be very few other people also at the demigod level, even on the Duluo continent. However, after finding Tang Wulin and settling down in Shrek Academy, he gradually came to discover just how much more powerful the Duluo continent was compared with the Star Luo continent. He had already been extremely stunned to meet Long Yeo and Yali, but after that came the two limit Duluo's of the Yuan and family, then the two limit Duluo's of the Tang sect. By the time he met Body Duluo Arahang, he already felt numb to it all. Just Shrek Academy alone had over five limit Duluo, two of which were quasi gods. One had to realize that he and NC were the only two limit Duluo's on the entire Star Luo continent. The difference in power was simply astounding. However, the biggest surprise for him had come on this day. Upon witnessing the three quasi gods that were leading the Abyssal army, Tongu had already prepared himself to sacrifice his own life to save Tang Wulin at any moment should it be required. Not only were there three quasi gods, two of them were evil soul masters, and under normal circumstances, evil soul masters were more powerful than normal soul masters of the same cultivation rank. There were five limit Duluo's among the allied forces, but Tang Wulin still wasn't a true limit Duluo, and there was only one person among them who had only recently reached the quasi god level. In Tongu's eyes, Yoli's most prominent attribute had always been her beauty, and he never thought that she would possess much combat prowess. Of course, this was also his first time ever seeing a healing system limit Duluo. He knew that her healing abilities would have a significant effect on the entire battlefield, but he was convinced that she wouldn't be of much use in battle against the most powerful beings of the opposing army. However, only after Yali unleashed her Archangel's Holy Spirit Dance did he come to realize just how wrong he had been. To the opposing army, her Archangel's Holy Spirit Dance was like an omnipotent curse, severely debilitating the three enemy quasi gods and turning the entire battlefield on its head. In contrast, all of the allies had been enhanced to different degrees, and he had actually benefited the most due to his five elemental powers. The five elements stemmed directly from nature, and under the influence of Archangel's Holy Spirit Dance, all of the elements had become extremely active, vigorously vanquishing evil and rejecting the enemy. Essentially, she had managed to amplify the power of the planar ruler. Was this something that a soul master was supposed to be capable of? Surely even a god wouldn't have been able to do much better in her shoes. As such, even now, Tongu was still struggling to process what he had just witnessed. The power that Yali had displayed on this day was definitely superior to that of any quasi god, and it was difficult to believe that this kind hearted and constantly smiling woman could be capable of making such a massive difference. In the wake of what had just transpired, he was forced to see Yali through new eyes, and he had developed a genuine sense of admiration toward her. All right, we'll be counting on you then. Tang Wuli made no attempt to refuse Tongyu's offer. Even now, he was still feeling rather strange about Tongyu, and to be honest, he didn't really know how to face him. As soon as Tongyu had arrived at Shrek Academy, he immediately expressed a willingness to give his own life at any moment to atone for his mistakes. However, who could actually say who was right or wrong under those circumstances? Even though Tang Wuli had given Tongyu a place to stay in the academy, he still struggled to truly accept Tongyu as an ally. All he wanted now was to reunite with his birth parents, as well as his foster parents. Tang Siren had to be the one to deliver the final verdict on Tongyu. A peaceful night passed by. The abyssal army had retreated in a very complete manner. At the very least, there was no trace of them to be seen from the defensive line. News had been delivered by the North Sea Legion overnight, stating that the construction of defensive infrastructure out at sea was complete, so they were ready to deal with any changes at any time. The arrival of the North Sea Legion finally allowed the Northern Legion to heave a sigh of relief. At the very least, the current defensive line seemed to be sufficiently fortified. The second batch of reinforcements finally arrived, and it came from the Central Legion, as expected of the most elite legion in the Federation. All of the troops were delivered in a mechanized process, and a large number of soul trains had been utilized. In the short span of just two days, most of the Central Legion's troops had appeared on the border of the continent's northernmost region, and they had taken over the defensive line. To no one's surprise, those Henbang was rewarded for his efforts in the initial defense. Even though the Northern Legion had suffered heavy losses, losing more of its troops during the course of the initial resistance, the Legion had managed to restrict the enemy from reaching further inland, and that was already a massively impressive feat. The army headquarters had promised that it would replenish troops for the Northern Legion as quickly as possible after the war, and that it definitely wouldn't be revoking the Northern Legion as a military unit. As for the specific reward for those Henfeng himself, that would have to be decided after the battle. With the arrival of the Central Legion's forces came another mysterious branch of the military. They set up camp on the mountaintop where the secondary tree of life was situated, and a small barracks quickly took shape around the secondary tree of life. Chapter 1767. The Federal Parliament had already viewed footage of the latest battle, and all of the high-ranking officials were stunned by Yoli's Archangel's Holy Spirit dance. Shrek Academy had once again appeared in everyone's line of sight as a very positive figure. Their timely arrival had saved the Northern Legion, and it was no exaggeration to say that they were the biggest heroes in this resistance effort outside of the Northern Legion. Thus, following the arrival of the Central Legion's forces, a representative was immediately sent to visit Tang Wulin. Currently, Tang Wulin was sitting in the temporary barracks across from a true powerhouse of the military. In the entire Duluo Federation, he was one of very few figures whose status wasn't inferior to Chen Zhenji. Greetings, General Wu. Tang Wulin greeted with a smile. The person seated across from him was an elderly general. This man was Uguanzi, a limit Duluo and the commander in chief of the Central Legion, one of the three most powerful figures in the military. Even the Central Legion was heavily affected by his family, and he was another vice hall master of the Battle God Hall. In the Battle God Hall, his status was second only to Chen Zhenji, and he was equal in standing to Guan Yue. However, in the military, his status was equal to that of Chen Zhenji, and even their level of influence was very comparable. He was one of the leading representatives of the Eagle Faction and one of the renowned generals of the Eagle Faction. Wu Guanzi's appearance was quite plain, notable only for his hooked nose. Despite the fact that he was already over 80 years of age, his eyes were still sharp and bright. Strictly speaking, he was a generation below Chen Zhenji, but his status wasn't inferior to Chen Zhenji at all. In private, he would even refer to Chen Zhenji as senior disciple brother as Chen Zhenji's father was Wu Guanzi's teacher. The power balance in the military was very convoluted and constantly changing, but the family was the most powerful family in the military that had remained true for the past 1,000 years. As such, even Chen Zhenji had to afford Wu Guanzi a certain level of respect. Due to the Eternal Heaven incident, Chen Zhenji wasn't assigned to be the commander in chief of the Northern Front. Instead, the duty had fallen to none other than Uguanzi. It was no exaggeration to say that with
weren't Tangwuling at all. All he could sense was Tangwuling was placid tranquility and restraint. This level of restraint was very rare even among middle-aged Pyro Duyos. Well, and someone of Tangwuling's age. I've heard much about you from my senior disciple brother. Now that I'm meeting you in person, I can see that even his high grace has failed to do you justice. Wu Guanzi said with a smile, "You're far too kind, General Wu." Tangwuling replied. Wu Guanzi continued, "I'm a soldier, so my personality is quite straightforward. Forgive me for skipping the pleasantries and cutting straight to the chase. Prior to coming here, I reviewed all of the information that we had on abyssal creatures, including some confidential files from the Blood God Legion detailing their experiences in combating the abyssal plane. So I developed a rudimentary understanding of these abyssal creatures. According to those files, it seems that the troublesome thing about these abyssal creatures is that they're unkillable. However, you just so happen to possess a divine tool that can overcome this problem. Is that correct?" Tang Wuling nodded in response. That's right. Wu Guanzi continued, in that case, you are integral to our resistance against the Abyssal Plane. I view the footage of the recently concluded battle, and on behalf of the military, I thank Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect for your timely reinforcement, which has prevented the Northern Front from collapsing. Both you and that Tree of Life have played vital roles in holding down the defensive line. Tang Wuling replied, as citizens of the Duluo continent, we've only done what's to be expected of us. The Tang Sect and Shrek Academy will continue to work tirelessly to contribute to this resistance effort to the best of our abilities. A hint of hesitation appeared in Wu Guanzi's eyes upon hearing this, and Tang Wuling prompted, if you have something to say, then please go ahead, General Wu. Wu Guanzi nodded in response. Prior to coming here, I also viewed the records of our last battle against the Abyssal Plane 6,000 years ago, and that's given me a better idea of just how fearsome these Abyssal creatures are. Even though Soul Technology has made huge strides, and we're fully confident in our ability to stop the Abyssal Army, we must admit that you and the Tree of Life are vital to this resistance effort. Hence, as the commander in chief of the Northern Front, I have a request for you. Tang Wuling prompted, Go ahead. Wu Guanzi didn't hesitate on this occasion. I hope to be the absolute leader with absolute authority during this battle. Only by following my orders unconditionally will the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy be able to play the biggest role it possibly can in this battle. Tang Wuling faltered slightly upon hearing this. It had to be said that Wu Guanzi was making a very reasonable request. After all, it was very important that there were no conflicting voices among the top brass during battles. Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect were very powerful organizations, but there were only very few people from the two organizations directly participating in this battle. After a brief moment of contemplation, Tang Wuling replied, General Wu, while it's true that I can represent Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect, you should be aware that both organizations are quite loose and non-binding in its policies, so it would be unreasonable to expect us to follow orders unconditionally as soldiers would. Having said that, I can assure you that as long as your instructions are reasonable, we'll be sure to execute them with immediate effect. He clearly couldn't completely agree to Iguanzi's request. After all, what if he instructed those from Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect to rush to their deaths? Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect had always had a rocky relationship with the Eagle Faction. Even now, Tang Wuling still didn't know how the Spirit Pagoda had obtained those two Godslayer missiles. But one thing was for sure: some of the higher ups of the Eagle Faction had definitely been involved. Now that the Spirit Pagoda had been crushed by Shrek Academy, there was always the possibility that the Eagle Faction would work with the Spirit Pagoda to try and weaken Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect during this battle. Iguanzi's brows furrowed slightly upon hearing this, and he was clearly rather displeased with this answer. In that case, you put me in a rather difficult position, Sect Master Tang. Changes could arise rapidly on a battlefield, and even the slightest hesitation could lead to ruin. Tang Wuling replied in a calm manner: "Rest assured, General." During the past 20,000 years, Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect have always stood at the very forefront whenever our continent has come under threat. A meaningful look appeared in Iguanzi's eyes as he said, that may be true, but Shrek Academy has never sided with the government, so for what reason is it participating in this battle? Tang Wuling's eyes lit up with conviction as he replied, we fight for justice, for fairness, and for the general public. Shrek Academy doesn't belong to anyone, only the people. Is that why Shrek Academy sees eternal heaven to threaten the Federation, thereby swaying the decisions of the federal parliament? Iguanzi accused in a cold voice. Tang Wuling's brows furrowed slightly upon hearing this. I'm not sure what you mean by that, General Wu. What is eternal heaven? A cold smile appeared on Iguanzi's face. Let's not play dumb here, Sect Master Tang. Are you saying that eternal heaven is in the possession of Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect? Iguanzi harbored very strong discontent toward the eternal heaven incident, and he was also extremely critical of Chen Zinji for the role he had played in the matter. Chapter 1768. If it weren't for the fact that Chen Zinji held significant sway in the military and was a quasi god with close ties with Yu family, he would have already proposed to impeach Chen Zinji. Tang Wuling's expression also fell slightly upon hearing this. General Wu, I had thought that you'd invited me here to discuss how to oppose the Abyssal Army. Are you here just to raise accusations and doubts against us instead? Iguanzi's expression returned to normal as he shook his head in response. Some things need to be controlled by the Federation. After all, the federal government is the main governing force on this continent. Tang Wuling replied, If the Federation were fair and just, then of course that wouldn't be an issue. But is that the case? If so, how did those two godslayer missiles fall onto Shrek City? Why is it that after the bombing, the perpetrators weren't held accountable at all for their heinous crimes? Just as you said, let's not play dumb here. Even if Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect have overstepped its boundaries, it's only for self-preservation. All those who have hurt us must pay the price. Wu Guanzi looked directly at Tang Wuling and didn't say anything for a long while. This young man held himself in a dignified manner that was neither haughty nor humble, and he was holding his ground even against an established general, as expected of the leader of the two super organizations. All right, then let's get back on topic. Sect Master Tang, are you willing to return Eternal Heaven to the Federation? If so, the Federation is willing to offer some things in exchange. I can also tell you that if the Federation recovers Eternal Heaven, there's a very good chance that it'll be directly used in this battle against the Abyssal Plane. Tang Wuling raised an eyebrow upon hearing this. May I ask what the Federation is willing to offer in exchange? Wu Guanzi took a deep breath before replying. The Federation is willing to give Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect ten parliamentary seats, but only under the condition that Shrek Academy continues to maintain a stance of neutrality. Furthermore, the Federation is willing to shoulder all costs associated with Shrek City's reconstruction, and it's also willing to give approval to Shrek Academy to establish its own private army, which will be officially recognized as a legion. On an official basis, the private army will belong to the Federation, but in reality, it answers only to Shrek City. Even Tang Wuling was very taken aback to hear this. The costs associated with reconstructing Shrek City amounted to an astronomical sum, and ten parliamentary seats was also a significant number, considering the entire federal parliament only had just over 100 seats. Essentially, Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect were being offered control of around 10% of the federal parliament. Even at its very peak, the Spirit Pagoda had never officially controlled so many parliamentary seats. However, all of this paled in significance to the fact that the Federation was willing to allow Shrek Academy to establish its own private army, one that would officially be recognized as a legion by the Federation. This was extremely significant as it was equivalent to allowing Shrek City to become an autonomous region that wasn't under the jurisdiction of the Federation. Ever since the founding of the Duluo Federation, such a situation had never occurred. With the wealth of Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect, if they were to put together a private army, it would definitely be an extremely formidable force that could be armed to the teeth in a very short time. To put it in simple terms, it would definitely have potential to become the most powerful legion on the entire continent. For a Federation to allow such a military unit to exist in the territory that it held jurisdiction over was downright incredible. When Iguanzi stated that he wanted to recover Eternal Heaven, Tang Wuling was struck by the impression that he could be one of the
army. We have no intention of becoming an autonomous region, nor do we have any need for a private army. Tang Wuling refused without any hesitation, not because the conditions weren't favorable enough, but because they were too favorable. Shrek City had always been a neutral entity, but could that neutrality be maintained once it organized a private army? What if one of the future generations of Shrek Academy's leaders had ambitions that matched those of the Kyan Fu family? Furthermore, the Federation was allowing Shrek Academy to organize a private army because of its power. But what if Shrek Academy were to fall into decline one day? If that were to happen, the private army could very well become an excuse for the Federation to get rid of Shrek Academy once and for all. Shrek Academy was an academy, and it definitely didn't require a private army. That was something that Tang Wuling was absolutely sure of. Despite being rejected, Wu Guanzi's expression relaxed slightly upon hearing this. One of his objectives for meeting with Tang Wuling was to feel out Tang Wuling's motives, as well as the stance being adopted by Shrek Academy. Truth be told, Tang Wuling had stunned the entire Federation by openly declaring war on the Spirit Pagoda and severely wounding Kyan Yu Dongfang with a single attack. No one could have anticipated that the mighty Spirit Pagoda would be so significantly inferior to the Shrek Academy in terms of high-end power. The number of Limit Duo in Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect combined numbered almost in double figures, and that was something that had never happened in the entire history of the Federation. As such, it had become a major cause for concern for the Federation. Such a powerful force was already significant enough to affect the jurisdiction of the Federation. Thus, Wu Guanzi had come here with the objective of determining Tang Wuling's mindset. If Shrek Academy really wanted to organize a private army, then he would propose to destroy Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect in the future at all costs. Otherwise, it could quite possibly develop into an organization like the Spirit Hall, in which case the Federation's rule would come under major threat. Tang Wuling's reply was very fast and decisive, so it was clear that he had no such ambitions, and that put Guanzi's heart completely at ease. Even his expression had softened a little. Then may I ask what Shrek Academy would like in exchange for eternal heaven? As long as the Federation is capable of satisfying your conditions, we'll be willing to consider it. Tang Wuling would see the shift in Guanzi's demeanor, and he realized that Guanzi had most likely been testing him with that offer. All Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect One is a peaceful continent. The Federation can rest assured. Once we exact our revenge on certain powers that have wronged us in the past, Shrek Academy will return to being an academy. As long as no one tries to hurt us, we won't retaliate. And when the Federation requires our services, Shrek Academy will always be willing to fight for the peace and safety of the Federation. A smile appeared on Hu Guanzi's face upon hearing this. Sex Master Tang, you're still a very young man, but you're much more of a wily old fox than I had imagined. I can't pick out any holes in your words. As I said, I'm a soldier, so I'm not a fan of talking in circles. I came here with two objectives. The first of which is to recover eternal heaven to be used as the main trump card against the abyssal plane, and the second is to borrow that divine weapon of yours for the Federation's use. After all, that divine weapon holds extreme significance for this battle, and it must be kept safe no matter what. You can stay any condition you like. The Federation will do everything in its power to satisfy you. Tang Wuling's lips twitched slightly upon hearing this. Not only was he asking for eternal heaven, he was targeting the Golden Dragon Spear as well. General Wu, I think we should be discussing how to combat the Abyssal Army. Rather than Wu Guanzi interjected with a serious expression, I'm completely serious about this. If you agree to lend us your divine weapon, the Federation can offer you at least three divine tools as a pledge, and their total value will definitely not be lower than your divine weapon. As long as it's something the Federation is able to offer, it's yours. A wry smile appeared on Tang Wuling's face as he replied, "I know you're serious about this, but I can't give you eternal heaven. When it's needed, our Tang Sect and Shrek Academy will be sure to deploy the missile without any hesitation. As for my divine weapon, even if I give you to you, you won't be able to take it." A faint smile appeared on Wu Guanzi's face. Is that so? Then how about we make a bet? If I can take the weapon, then you'll agree to the exchange. How about that? Chapter 1769, Tribute of Life. Tang Wuling chuckled. Didn't you say you only wanted to borrow my divine weapon? Wu Guanzi replied, the Federation is open to an exchange as well. What if you can't take it? Tang Wuling asked. A faint smile appeared on Guanzi's face as he replied, If I can't take it, then I won't mention this matter again. On top of that, the Central Legion will shoulder the duty of protecting the Shrek Academy and Tang Sect encampment, and I'll discuss all decisions made on this battlefield with you. The top brass in the military really are all wily old foxes. Tang Wuling couldn't help but think to himself. Initially, Wu Guanzi had been very stern and unyielding, but his approach had gradually shifted to become more gentle. He was constantly testing and probing Tang Wuling, switching between his stern and benevolent facades where suitable, as expected of one of the leading representatives of the Eagle Faction. All right, then you can give it a try. Tang Wuling wasn't interested in taking advantage of this battle against the Abyssal Plane to extort the Federation for benefits. That was the type of behavior that both he and the two organizations that he represented would frown upon. All he wanted was for everyone to unite as one and face this common enemy together. Tang Wuling rose to his feet as he spoke, and a flash of golden light appeared his hand, following which the golden dragon spear emerged with faint rainbow light radiating from its surface. Wu Guanzi also rose to his feet and began to carefully appraise the divine weapon. Instead of being in a hurry to act, he was making a thorough visual assessment first. The two ends of the spear were tapered to sharp points, while the central shaft was around as big as a child's arm, and the entirety of the spear was covered in golden dragon patterns. There was bright light radiating from the spear. Everything seemed to be very restrained, but the faint rainbow sheen that the spear was giving off was very captivating to behold. What an impressive divine weapon! Wu Guanzi couldn't help but praise. Tang Wuling smiled and made an inviting hand gesture. Wu Guanzi turned toward him and asked, "If I'm not mistaken in my assessment, you've already forged a spiritual connection with this divine weapon, right?" Tang Wuling replied, "I succeeded by a stroke of fortune not long ago." Wu Guanzi chuckled, "You're far too modest, Sex Master Tang. As expected of a once-in-a-generation talent like yourself, looks like." You're going to become the next limit duo in the near future. Perhaps even the second Atlas duo. He was already able to severely wound Kyang Yu Dongfang as a rank 98 hyper duo. Once he became a limit duo, he would most likely immediately cross into the realm of quasi gods. If it weren't for the sudden emergence of the Abyssal Army, the spirit pagoda would have most likely already been completely crushed by Shrek Academy. Wu Guanzi raised his right hand and said, "Please pardon my intrusion." A layer of azure light suddenly appeared over his right hand as he spoke, and as soon as this light emerged, the entire room was filled with a powerful aura of life. Tang Wuling's pupils abruptly contracted slightly upon sensing this. This was life energy of an extremely high level of purity. In terms of its concentration and degree of purity, it could even compare with the life energy of the Tree of Life. Right at this moment, a green crystalline glove that looked as if it had been carved out of jade appeared over Wu Guanzi's hand. This wasn't a piece of battle armor. The incredibly abundant life energy that was releasing struck even Tang with a noticeable sense of comfort. One had to realize that his life force was even more powerful than that of a quasi god. So for him to be affected in this way indicated that this glove was definitely also a divine tool. The green light appeared to be almost substantial in form, and as soon as the glove was released, Wu Guanzi's physical appearance seemed to have suddenly become a lot more youthful. He reached out with his right hand without any hesitation to grab onto the golden dragon spear's shaft, and the spear immediately flashed with golden light. The green glove also began to glow brighter in response, releasing an aura of life energy that was ten times as potent as it had been before. The green light instantly spread over the entire golden dragon spear, and the golden dragon spear's aura completely vanished as it sat obediently in Wu Guanzi's grasp. Wu Guanzi immediately burst into triumphant laughter. This is truly an exceptional spear. He could clearly sense the astonishing amount of energy contained within the golden dragon spear, and he could even feel his own bloodline being altered in subtle ways by this divine weapon.
Master Tang. Could it be that you are already prepared to hand it over to the Federation? Rest assured, I'll be sure to follow through on my promise. The Federation has several divine tools, as does our family. You can choose any of them in exchange for this sphere. Tang Wolin's lips twitched slightly upon hearing this. He wasn't surprised to hear that the Federation owned several divine tools, but the fact that the same applied to the Yu family was a clear testament of its wealth as the number one family in the military. Tang Wolin shook his head in response. It's a pity that such a brilliant divine tool is going to waste. Wu Guanzi was rather befuddled by this response, but in the next instant, his expression suddenly changed drastically. The golden dragon spear in his grasp suddenly turned a dark golden color, and the dragon patterns on its surface bulged outward as if a series of giant golden dragons had sprung to life on the sphere. A burst of tremendous suction force instantly erupted out of the sphere, and in that instant, Wu Guanzi felt as if he were holding a black hole rather than a sphere. The life energy imbued with interview of life was extremely pure and vast, but it was being rapidly devoured by the golden dragon sphere. Meanwhile, bright green light was radiating from Tang Wuling's body, and his aura was quickly being elevated. Even the secondary tree of life outside was affected, as evidenced by the fact that all of its leaves had lit up. Wu Guanzi hurriedly turned to Tang Wuling with an urgent expression. Please stop this, Sect Master Tang. A wry smile appeared on Tang Wuling's face. You should be the one letting go of the spear. I'm not responsible for this. The divine weapon has a mind of its own. Wu Guanzi immediately realized the core of the problem upon hearing this, and he hurriedly tried to let go of the golden dragon spear, but the spear refused to be released. It seemed to have become glued to tribute of life, and Wu Guanzi was unable to shake it off no matter what he tried. He released his soul power in a violent eruption to try and force the golden dragon spear away. But to his horror, even his soul power was devoured by the golden dragon spear with relish. He could even sense that the spear was beginning to connect with his life energy and draw upon it along with the life energy of tribute of life. This thing is way too aggressive. Wu Guanzi immediately arrived at a decision, hurling tribute of life away along with the golden dragon spear. If someone else were in his place, they would perhaps have hesitated. But as a soldier, he knew the importance of being decisive. If he had hesitated any longer, even his cultivation base would have been affected. The golden dragon spear hovered in midair on its own, releasing a string of loud and joyful dragons' roars. Chapter 1770: Devouring the Divine Tool. Meanwhile, tribute of life transformed into a ball of green jelly-like substance that was quickly squirming in an attempt to extricate itself from the golden dragon spear. However, the golden dragon spear refused to let up, and regardless of how much it struggled and writhed, the light radiating from the golden dragon spear continued to grow brighter and brighter, while tribute of life dimmed further with each passing second. Sex Master Tang, can't you stop this? Wu Guanzi asked in an exasperated manner. He had truly shot himself in the foot. Prior to coming here, it had never occurred to him that something like this was a possibility. A wry smile appeared on Tang Wuling's face. I want to stop it, but I can't. I'm only a vessel for this sphere. I can't stop it when it wants to do something. Divine tools have their own autonomous will and are capable of evolution. For the Golden Dragon Spear, devouring life energy is the key to its evolution. As its vessel, I can help it store some life energy, which it will gradually absorb while it's resting in my body. So there's nothing I can do to stop it. It clearly really likes your tribute of life. Just like a child who's found a new favorite toy, we can't take that toy away from it or it'll throw a tantrum. We're still depending on it in this battle against the abyssal plane, so we can't afford to get on its bad side now, isn't that right? Wu Guanzi's lips twitched slightly upon hearing this. What kind of question was that? What choice did he have in the matter? Wu Guanzi didn't know whether to laugh or cry at this situation. This tribute of life belonged to his family, not the Federation, who was going to compensate him for its loss. Even though he was the current family leader, having a divine tool stripped away like this was a heavy loss. Sex Master Tang, you have to compensate me for this. Wu Guanzi urged with a wry smile. Tang Wuling replied, How do you propose we do that? Our Shrek Academy and Tang Sect are just small organizations with no other divine tools in our possession. Wu Guanzi almost swore out loud upon hearing this. Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect were small organizations. What kind of small organization stood for 20,000 years? However, he knew that he couldn't afford to lose his temper here, so he could only heave a full onside. Ever since I became the leader of my family, tribute of life has always been with me. To me, it's not just a divine tool, it's a friend, a companion, a brother, it's family. I can't bear to part with it. Tears began to well up in his eyes as he spoke, and Tang Wuling couldn't help but be stunned by Wu Guanzi's acting skills. He clearly wasn't that grief stricken just a moment ago. How had the onset of emotions arrived so quickly? This was some next level method acting. Tang Wuling put on a resigned expression and said, There's not much I can do. You asked for this yourself, and I don't have any divine tools to compensate you with. Wu Guanzi sighed, The problem is that I have to answer to my family. How about this? I won't ask for a divine tool for compensation. I've heard that you're a super prodigy of the blacksmith world, and that your heavenly refinement speed is unmatched. So how about you forge a few suits of four word battle armor for our family in your spare time? If you can do that, I'll shoulder the blame for the loss of this divine tool. Tang Wuling was astonished by just how shameless this elderly general was. He was making it sound like suits of four word battle armor were cabbage that could be sold for a dime a dozen. I can only promise you one suit of four word battle armor, Tang Wuling said. Deal. Wu Guanzi agreed without any hesitation. While it was completely unexpected that Tribute of Life was devoured, Wu Guanzi had already made up his mind before coming here that his most important objective was to establish good relations with Tang Wuling, and the main reason behind this was that Tang Wuling was the only current active divine blacksmith. As the leader of a prominent family, he had to think for the sake of his next generation, and the importance of forward battle armor couldn't be understated. He never actually intended to get Tang Wuling to return eternal heaven. Given sufficient time, Tang Wuling would definitely be able to drive Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect to a historically unprecedented peak. What would it be like once all of the titled duo of Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect were equipped with suits of forward battle armor? No other power would have any hope of matching the two super organizations then. To put it bluntly, perhaps there would only be a chance for Shrek Academy to be repressed once Tang Wuling passed away. The crushing defeat Tang Wuling had inflicted upon Kai and heralded the arrival of a new era that belonged to Shrek Academy. The final traces of light radiating from Tribute of Life faded, and the Golden Dragon Spear roared with elation as it vanished back into Tang Wuling's labella as a streak of golden light. Immediately thereafter, Tang Wuling's aura also became subdued again. At his current level of power, controlling his own aura was a very simple task. Offering a suit of four word battle armor in exchange for devouring a divine tool was a very worthwhile trade, and he could clearly sense the emotion of excitement currently being transmitted to him by the Tree of Life. This was life energy of the highest caliber and highest degree of purity, and it was what the Tree of Life yearned for the most. In this short span of time, the secondary Tree of Life had grown to over twice its original size, stretching to over 50 meters tall. All types of plants were beginning to germinate on the nearby mountains, and rich life energy hung in the air like a substantial mist. Devouring this divine tool had benefited the ancient Tree of Life even more so than devouring the energy of all of those abyssal creatures during the day. Tang Wuling could sense that even the life energy of a quasi god level abyssal creature would only provide roughly the same level of nourishment for the tree of life. Even more importantly, he could feel extremely potent reciprocation from the tree of life, thereby drastically enhancing his physical body. He seemed to be in a state that was infinitely approaching Arahang's invincible Vajra body. All he needed was the final breakthrough. Wu Guanzi heaved a long sigh as he turned to Tang Wuling with an envious expression. Looks like I won't be able to complete any of the objectives I came here with. Sex Master Tang, what are your views on this battle? Everything else that had been discussed earlier had been largely irrelevant, and Wu Guanzi was finally getting to the main topic now. After watching the footage of the battle between the five limit Bulu of Shrek Academy and the three quasi gods of the Abyss, Wu Guanzi knew that